Lesson 6 A Man from Glasgow William Somerset Morgan Introduction William Somerset Morgan 1870-1965 holds a unique place among the English writers of this century as an entertainer. He was born in Paris. At the age of 10 he came to England, and he was educated at King's School, Canterbury, and at Heidelberg University. He travelled widely in Europe and the Far East, and records his experiences in his travel books such as, On a Chinese Screen, The Gentleman in the Parlour, and Don Fernando. He began his literary career as a novelist and then turned to drama. He started his life as a doctor and gave up his medical profession for a literary career. Of Human Bandage, The Moon and Six Pens, Cakes and Ale and The Razor's Edge are some of his famous novels. He died in 1965. Somerset Morgan is an adept in handling the short story. He produced more than a hundred interesting short stories. Many of his short stories have been dramatized. His short stories are written in a simple and lucid style. As a storyteller, he has the gift of gripping the reader's attention from the beginning till the end. A Man from Glasgow is taken from his collection entitled Creatures of Circumstance. He has dramatized this wired story. Contents A Man from Glasgow Somerset Morgan begins his essay by narrating an incident that engaged the attention of Shelley when he drove into Naples. Shelley saw a young youth pursued and killed by a man armed with a knife. He did not look upon it as a bit of local color. A Calabrian priest who listened to the emotions and sentiments of Shelley laughed at him and even ridiculed him. Shelley had a kind and soft heart and never had such a horrible experience as Shelley had when he drove into Naples. Description of Algeciras Morgan's experience in Algeciras was something different from an ordinary experience. He went to Algeciras. It was an untidy town. Everything was dirty and shabby in the inn, in which he stayed. But he could get a beautiful view of Gibraltar. The inn was dirty, the man, who took him to the upstairs, was ugly and the landlord in charge of the inn, just gave the room number and continued playing cards. In such an inn, Morgan wanted to take scanty meal. In the narrow room with whitewashed walls and low ceiling, Morgan saw a man who was warming himself near the round brass dish of hot ashes. It was midwinter and the window passage across the bay had chilled his blood and body. He finished eating and went to the dish of burning ashes to warm himself. Storyteller's Acquaintance with Robert Morrison The man whom he met near the fire was not talkative. The author wanted to drag him into a conversation, but his efforts broke down before his, the stranger's, monosyllabic replies. The author offered a cigarette to the stranger and they smoked in silence. His features were hard, mouth, ears and nose were large and heavy and his skin was much wrinkled. 
The author was irritated to see him constantly pulling his grey moustache. The author's casual inquiries excited him so much that he sprang from his feet and walked backwards and forwards. He stamped to and fro, like a caged beast. He was pushing aside a chair that stood in his way and was repeating the words, too long, too long. Then he sat down in his chair and asked the author whether his, the stranger, behavior was strange. And the author replied not more than most people. The stranger was Robert Morrison from Glasgow and he wanted tobacco from the author. He filled his pipe and lit it from a piece of burning charcoal. From the eccentric behavior of Morrison, the author decided that his restlessness was due to chronic alcoholism. The author made up his mind to slip off to bed. Then Robert Morrison spoke in a business-like way. He had been managing some olive groves. He was working for the Glasgow and South of Spain Olive Oil Company Limited. He was sober and spoke with Scotch precision. Morrison at Aceza Aceza is the center of the olive trade. The Spaniard who looked after the business was robbing the company right and left. Morrison could not get a reliable man for the company. So he himself went there to look after the trees. The company had a big estate, two miles away from the town. There was a beautiful house on the crest of a hill. No one lived there. But it saved him the rent of a place in town. Morrison lived with an old man and his wife. Sometimes he would go down to the village and play Trezillo, a kind of card game. He was there for two years. Hot season in Aceza In the month of May, it was terribly hot in Aceza. Morrison had never known such a heat in May. People would not do any work. The laborers just lay about in the shades and slept. Many sheep died of heat and some animals went mad. Even oven could not work. The animals gasped for breath. In the blistering sun one would feel that one's eyes were shot out of one's head. All the crops got dried up and the olives fell into a ruined state. The earth cracked and crumbled. In short, it was hell in May. Morrison kept the windows shut and had the floors watered, but that did not do any good. One could not get even a wink of sleep. The nights were also as hot as day and Morrison felt as if he was living in an oven. Morrison's experience on the first full moon night at his residence. Morrison thought that he could get at least a few hours of sleep. He had a bed on the north side of the house in a room. His bed was so hot that he could not stand it, and so he turned and tossed. He got up and went to the veranda and leant against the parapet and looked at the olive trees. It was a glorious night and the moon was very bright in the sky. He was reminded of the cool breeze in the fir trees and the streets in Glasgow. In the middle of the olive country, he forgot that he was in Spain. All of a sudden, he heard a man's voice. Morrison did not know what it was, and the sound was not loud, 
but low and seemed to creep through the silence. The funny sort of laughter was heard in the past midnight hours. It was a chuckle. Morrison leant forward and stared. The moon was bright and the night was as bright as day. The sound stopped for a minute and started off again. It was no more a chuckle but a belly laugh that rang through the night. There was no answer for the call for Morrison, but he could hear a loud roar of laughter. He thought it to be the laughter of a drunkard in his place. It was a yell, and the crisis resembled the cries of a man whose throat was cut. Morrison thought that someone was being killed. He ran down towards the sound. One piercing shriek sounded like a shriek of someone at the point of death. Morrison could not find anyone. He went back to his room but hardly had any sleep that night. The next day, he was told by Joe's that an insane man had inhabited the little white house nearby. But the mad man had been dead for 20 years. Morrison's Attempt to Probe the Mystery The Scott, Morrison, leaning back in his chair and panting, narrated his efforts to probe the mystery. He went down to the house and walked all around it. The shutters were tight closed, the windows were barred and no one responded when the bell was rung. As far as the condition of the house was concerned, there was practically no paint left on the door and even the tiles of the roof were lying on the ground. Morrison inquired his friend Fernandez about the insane man. The mad man was usually lethargic, but whenever he had attacks of acute mania, he would laugh and cry. In one such attack he, the insane man, died, and from that time onwards, no one dared to live in the house. Morrison did not tell Fernandez what he heard, for he thought he, Fernandez, would laugh at him. Second, Full Moon Night Morrison went on sleeping in the lumber room at the back. Twenty-eight days elapsed after the first nerve-wrecking experience on the full moon night. When he was fast asleep, it seemed that someone gave a nudge to warn him. He was awake and heard a low gurgle, bubbling sound. The shouts of the laughter rang through the night and the Scots' legs began to tremble. After a pause, there was a shriek of pain and sobbing. It seemed that an animal was being tortured. The sounds then died away little by little and the Scot went back to bed. Third, Full Moon Night It was quite obvious that it was the full moon night that set him off. On the next full moon night, he cleaned and loaded his revolver. He did not go to bed. He prepared a lantern and sat down on the parapet, protective well at the edge of a flat roof, waiting for the sound. There was a bit of a wind and it whistled about the roof. He rustled over the leaves of the olive trees. There was no light anywhere in the house and the chuckling grew louder. The sound of the calling bell seemed to amuse the insane man and he wrote with laughter. The more he knocked the door open. The house was stinking for the windows were opened after 20 years. 
He took out his revolver on one hand and held his lantern in the other hand. The laughter sounded louder now, and the walls echoed the uproar. Morrison searched the rooms, and then the laughter was heard just above his head. He threw his light ahead of him. Morrison was separated from the room only by a thin door. He began to tremble and he was about to run away but forced himself to stay. He heard an unusual hissing sound, which he had not heard before. He flung open the door and entered in. The room was empty, but he heard the moaning and sobbing groans and frightful gasps. Fernandez had slunk away. While narrating his horrible experience, Morrison, the solid man, looked like a lay figure in a studio. The author asked him to continue his story. The Scot decided not to step in that room and moved to his quarters. Again the madman's chuckle had shaken his nerves. Without telling anything about the chuckle and a pro, he got Fernandez awake till two in the morning by playing cards with him. Then he heard the laughter which grew louder and louder. The Scot heard the scream of pain but Fernandez thought that Morrison was mad but had not the guts to call him insane. Next day the Scot learned that Fernandez had not slept in his bed the previous night and had moved out secretly. Morrison at Seville Morrison now appointed an agent at Aceza and left for Seville. He thought he was safe from the chuckle and a pro. If he heard it in Seville, he would be hearing it all his life. He had much courage but human flesh and blood could not stand the inhuman groans and cries of pain. He feared he would become mad and so resorted to drinking. It was full moon night when the author was hearing from Scott. The author noticed a strange and terrible look on the face of Morrison. The Scott got up and walked out of the room slamming the door behind him. Morgan states that he himself did not sleep that night. Conclusion The story has an element of eeriness and weirdness in it. Many a short story leaves us guessing. Much is left to the imagination of the readers. In this short story, A Man from Glasgow, Morgan leaves the mystery unexplained. How is it that no one else, except Morrison, Hears the chuckle and shrieks of pain? Perhaps it was a mere hallucination that haunted the man. Why should he suffer from such hallucination? We do not get any solid answer for such questions. But though we may not believe the airy story, we are tempted to know what will happen next. Certainly it satisfies the characteristics of a weird story. Summary The author goes on a trip to Algeciras, a shabby town with dinghy inns. He stays in a dirty inn, and there he comes across Morrison by the fireplace after dinner. A little conversation with him shows that Morrison has been having hallucinations of a wild chuckle during full moon nights. He explains to the author of how he heard it in Esija during the first full moon night and thereafter subsequently on the second and third full moon nights at various places. 
The author understands that Morrison has been moving to places in order to avoid hearing the mad chuckle on full moon nights. The author is not able to believe in the weird account that Morrison gives and assumes that his hallucination is due to his chronic alcoholism. Finally, Morrison leaves him telling that it was a full moon night and he would like to go to bed because he did not want to listen to the mad chuckle. This causes creepiness in the mind of the author and he confesses that he could not gather any sleep that night. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe and share.